Hey everyone! <laughs> I am starting dead on time. Is that a stream record? Has anyone ever done that before in the history of streaming? Hello! Hello everyone and welcome to part two of the Sparkphone Inventors Kit learning extravaganza featuring yours truly, learning electronics for the first time. <laughs> I uh, I hope my mic is working. I was uh, I was admittedly having having some mic problems before we started, but uh, please let me know you can hear me and and that I, I sound like like a full a full human. I am a uh, I definitely want to make sure that uh, you can hear me. I feel like if you can't hear me, like the stream is pretty much pointless. So uh, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I definitely need to know. Mike is good. Oh, thank goodness. I've had nothing, nothing but audio problems probably the past, I don't know, three or four weeks now. It's been, it's been a bit of an audio adventure. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't know what I did to, to be blessed with such audio issues, but, uh, yeah, we're working now. If I cut out at any point, Please make a whole lot of noise in the chat so I, I know to, to check it because clearly I can get it working and that's really all that matters. So hey! Hey everyone! <laughs> Thank you for being here tonight, particularly um, uh, if you are American and uh, instead of being out celebrating a thing, I don't know, like I... I feel like I vaguely remember a holiday happening around this time, but it's been it's been so long since I lived in the States, you see, that I have I've forgotten how to be American. <laughs> I can't even get through it with a straight face. Um, <laughs> basically, I was gonna say, before we get before we kick this off, the fourth of July is actually a holiday for me. I mean, beyond, I suppose, the obvious one. The 4th of July is actually the day that I moved to the UK from the US. So I guess you could say it is my reverse Independence Day. Um, so yeah, as of tomorrow, I will have been in the UK for 11 years, which is kind of crazy to say out loud. Wow. All right. So yeah. <laughs> Your 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 favorite uh, American Brit, because I am both, has uh, has been here for quite some time now. So, yes, I am. Uh, I am so glad. I'm so glad y'all can hear me. I still gotta. I, I clearly gotta. You know, I need sound panels basically. So, <laughs> that's uh that's that's really the thing. How y'all y'all liking my new macro lens? Like I will give you a. Uh, Look at how nice and beautiful the Sparkfun Redboard looks on this macro lens. I cannot, I can't get over how crispy and juicy, like you can, you can read, you can read all of the text on here. I mean, at least I think you can. <laughs> I guess it depends on how big your screen is. If you've got a small screen, you might not be able to. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really... It's really nice. Admittedly, I didn't get this lens for live streaming explicitly, but so that I could get sweet, sweet, juicy macro shots, which if you saw my latest video on flexible filaments, you will have seen those juicy macro shots. So this is just, you know, basically side bonus that you guys get to, uh, you get to see the electronics super like up close and personal. So I am, I am pleased. I am pleased with that. But, uh, Totally lost my train of thought. I knew there was a thing. There was a thing that I was gonna say, and now it's gone. So, um, yeah, if it is important, I suppose it'll come back to me. So, I, uh, I, I am a little bit more dressed down today than I think I have been in previous streams because I like, I like to, I like to dress up a little bit for my streams. I feel like it's fun and enjoyable, and everyone, everyone enjoys it. But today, I am wearing my. Uh, Legend of Zelda Pride, because I am a huge nerd. Surprising nobody. 
anyone who doesn't know that at this point is has presumably not been paying much attention because I'm pretty pretty clear about it. So yeah. Anyway, what uh, what we're here for? What we're really here for? <laughs> Actually, I remember the thing. <laughs> I remember the thing now. I remember the thing now. And uh, hello, everyone. Hello, Jay. Thank you for making it. Yes, I get to call you out and embarrass you because you're my friend. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the thing I almost forgot is you might notice on the screen, there is a little thing that mentions supporting me at uh, ko-fi.com slash geekyfayart. I do not have the super chat function in YouTube because I don't have enough subscribers yet. So to, um, to circumvent that, I have this lovely Kofi thing. So it's not exactly the same. You still gotta go to the Kofi website to, um, to basically to make a donation, to make a gift uh, like the super chat instead of it being in the chat. But when you do, it will pop up on screen just like a super chat would so that I can thank you and if you have a question you want me to a answer or something like that, you can put it there and I'll see it and everyone will see it just like the super chat. So I think it's a, um, it's a pretty clever way to get around a kind of restricted thing. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'll take what I can get, won't I? Sorry, YouTube, you can't stop me from, you know, getting, getting, getting my fans to, to be cool to me. So anyway, Anyway, so uh, yeah, we have, we're, we're back to the SparkFun Inventors Kit. If you missed the first stream, I basically did my first ever, 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 ever electronics with the SparkFun Inventors Kit. We did the first project, which admittedly was like four things built into one. And it was, it was a lot. I feel like I went from zero to 60 in two hours. Like I, I genuinely knew nothing and I walked away having made LEDs blink and I had a general understanding of the code and it felt amazing. It felt so good. And I still can't stop just kind of raving about how good this kit is if you are a beginner too, because it doesn't have any assumed knowledge which is great because a lot of online tutorials do. They assume you know stuff already and you got to start somewhere. So this is where I'm starting and where I'm continuing because we are on to uh, we are on to project two. Project two. It's very shiny and hard to see. Um, so for project two, as uh, Rob may have hinted on Twitter, is uh yeah there's gonna be sound involved so there's a there's a buzzer there is definitely a there's a buzzer and it's apparently gonna make some sounds it's gonna make some songs i don't know how it's gonna make songs but it's gonna make songs so yeah this is this is going to apparently culminate as well in a simon says sort of game which the fact that you can create a simon says game on a tiny little Arduino and breadboard still just kind of blows my freaking mind. So yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm excited. We're, we're definitely, we're definitely going to, um, we're going to have some fun, but also, hi, Sean. <laughs> I know I'm very, I'm very, very rude calling people out. So obviously we've got some, there is some new stuff here. We have, you know, we have the buzzer, this little, little, what's it, what's it? I was going to say, I, I had it and I lost it. It's called a, a something buzzer, a piezo buzzer, which perhaps Rob would be so kind to explain why it's called that because I don't actually see why here, so I can't explain it. Um, we're, we're back with the uh, potentiometer, our little, uh, our little tin pot here, our little, little rotatey switch. And that's kind of it for this first one, though I do need some jumper jumper cable, so I'm gonna grab some of those now. Um, it looks like one of the new things that this introduces is the concept of arrays. And, boop, boop, boop. I'm gonna get uh, some of my jumpers out. Um, 
Oh my gosh. Oh, Zach, thank you. Thank you for testing the technology to make sure it works. It's very important. Just, you know, we gotta, we gotta make sure that it's functional for, for everyone, everyone else, clearly. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. But uh, let's see here. I've got some, I've got some jumpers. Apparently I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need four. Um, but yes, this introduces the concept of arrays which is apparently like a variable, but they can store multiple values, which makes sense in this case because we are, apparently the buzzer is going to be creating different frequencies like musical notes. And everyone knows that a song has more than two music notes in it. So it would make sense that you would need to be able to store multiple music notes, hence the arrays. It makes sense. I, I reckon it makes sense. So obviously, yeah, we got to start with hooking stuff up. We got to start with a, a full hooking up of things. So I'm going to. Oh, thank you, Andy. Thank you. Electric electricity into sound and vice versa, but without magnets. Learning things today. Learning things today. I am indeed learning things today. Oh, yeah. And you guys get to uh, be some of the first to appreciate my new my new haircut, which is at least, at least a hundred percent more cool, literally speaking, because I, I now have easier access to my head, but also I, you can, you can definitely appreciate my, uh, my sparkles, my <laughs> seeing, seeing that I am in fact 35 and not 25. Cause I, I sure hope 25 year olds don't have this much gray. I certainly didn't when I was 25. So let's switch over here. Cause uh, yeah, I'm 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 gonna start plugging things in. I'm gonna start plugging things in. Yes, I am. So we got nope. We got to make sure we got the buzzer with the positive at the top. So now I've got that correctly, and I'm gonna put the tin pot there. Do do do. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. let's see here. We're going to plug into the ground. We're going to make sure that I'm not getting in front of the camera, which I'm totally not. So it's fine. Boop. And boop. I do like that. <laughs> All right. Somebody's going to have to tell me what Atony's 85s is because uh, that is, that's new for me. That is entirely new. So, all right, this is going to go there. This is going to go into 10. Yeah, that's, that's like that. And uh, I'm going to use more blacks because I like color coordinating numbers to the butt. And this is actually part of the reason why I am so excited to have proper, like the full spectrum rainbow jumper cables for use with my pie here. Look at that. Look at that. Cause, cause I am, uh, I am simultaneously working on a, a raspberry Pi related electronics thing as well, because you know, I can't wait to do anything. Um, yeah, I just have to do everything all at once. So yeah, I'm gonna now choo 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 choo. I'm gonna put that one there. And we're gonna put that one there. I do think that I have it set up just so, Zach, that I shouldn't actually block the camera, which is actually one of the joys of a macro lens, is it can be further away. And yeah, because last stream the camera was like basically like right next to my shoulder. So if I moved, if I breathed too much, I'd hit the camera this, this way, like obviously my hand gets in the way, but, uh, I'd have to actually really lean over. Like I'd have to get into myself into a bit of a pretzel to really block it, which is impressive. I think. All right. That and that. So I'm going to pull this forward a little bit so y'all can see. Yeah. See, that looks, we got, we got our grounds. We got a ground connected to the 
buzzer. We've got a ground connected to the um, to the tin pot, to the potentiometer. We've got a cable connecting the potentiometer to the buzzer, and then we've got the buzzer uh, assigned to looks like ten for ten. So this is a pretty simple, pretty simple start. So. Um, <laughs> Ah, uh, y'all are, y'all are fantastic. Hello and welcome to, to everyone else who has dropped in. Y'all are good. Okay. So we're, we're ready to, to boot this up. Like we're, we're off to a roaring start. And so I'm going to, let's do, yeah, there's not much to see here. So we'll do this one. I've already got it pulled up. So we've got the very first, first thing here, which is our buzzer, which is obviously we've got, we've got the, the speaker assigned to 10. That looks good. Yep. Speaker pin set. This is that, 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 that. Speaker pin set to output. <laughs> ah. Red leather, yellow leather for all the theater kids out there. Um, and then we've got our, our notes here. We have what I'm guessing is the array. Where is the array set? The array should be here somewhere. Aha! Character notes. The array matches frequencies. This is cool. There we go. Chart of frequencies for notes in C major. See, I find this cool because I like, I'm, I'm a, again, former theater kid, which includes music. So, all right, let us get plugged in. All right. I'm going to let y'all see because we blinking now. You got to love, you got to love a bit of blinking. I'm even going to turn this a bit. Na, 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 na. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do that at least four more times tonight. Right, so yeah, we are, we're ready to upload. Let's upload. Let's do an upload. Da, da, da. Upload. All right. Still doing it. That right, says it's done uploading. Mm, I don't hear anything. I might have done something wrong. See, see, everything was going way too smoothly. Of course, of course, something had to had to go sideways. Um, let's have a quick look here. Oh, that might have been it. I don't think my pins were in all the way. So I'm going to pop it out real quick. I'm also going to, yeah, I don't think those are in quite all the way. So I'm going to move this over one. Let's put that, oh, put that there and we'll move it over one. Oh, these, these are always a little, our breadboard's always this, uh, this sticky. It's hard to get things into. All right, so let's just double check real quick. Yeah. That we got this to this. And we got this over to this. Got that connected to, to ground. And then we have this connected over here. All right. I mean, everything looks right to me. So let's try it again. I may also reset it too. Cheap ones can be tight. Good to know. Good to know. Let's go back. Yeah, you're right. Better than too loose. Better than two this. So we're going to do a quick reset just in case this still has code on it from last time. Okay. 
do like that this has a reset button on it. I think that's quite nice. All right, let's try it again. Everyone cross your fingers. Fingers crossed. We're compiling. We're uploading. We're done uploading. Uh-oh. <laughs> Told ya that I've had nothing but, uh, nothing but non-stop audio problems. It apparently includes today. Unless I just have the volume turned on? Oh, maybe I do. Actually, I may have had the, the volume on it turned all the way down. That seems entirely possible. Okay, I'm actually gonna... Let's do this one more time. We're gonna reset again. And we're gonna do it one more time because I think I actually had the volume turned all the way down, which would be typical. Entirely typical. Oh, it is. It's just really quiet. So it does work. I just had the volume turned all the way down. Guys, I literally had this pretty much very similar problem just yesterday on my Raspberry Pi. So I am just a little bit cursed. I want that. I want, how do I, I want it to go again. Please go again. I want to hear the whole thing. Do it again. Go, go. Yeah, let me get closer. It works, guys. It is functional. This is also funny because my birthday is in a week. <laughs> my, uh, yeah, my, my 35th birthday is July 12th. So this is funny. This is good timing for this. This is, this is all, this is, uh, I don't know if it's serendipity, but it's something. There is a Jewish word for this and I'm forgetting it right now. So, right. Okay. So it does work. Everything is connected correctly. I just had the volume turned all the way down. So, um, so yeah, kind of looking like this, obviously this has got notable, notable code things. And so like, I definitely want to, let's, let's go back and look at the code one more time because for anyone who's out there who's learning with me, I think this is an important bit. The code is obviously a huge bit. Like, this is just like a couple of, like, this is literally, if you include the jumper cables, six components. That's it. This is obviously, the code is where things really happen. So, obviously, we've got the void, the void play is where obviously the the notes get noted haha <laughs> so we have that down here we have the void play character note and it looks like int beats is going to be uh, probably to do with the the waiting in between so the notes just aren't on top of each other um tone pin frequency and duration is the tone function and Ah, uh, yeah, sorry, int number of notes, 14. The number of notes in our note and frequency array. There are 15 values. The arrays always start at zero. All right, there we go. That's, that's what that is. Um, character notes are obviously defined by their musical note, which makes perfect sense. Um, matches frequencies with each letter, e.g. the fourth note is F, the fourth, so the fourth in the fourth frequency is 175. Boom, like so. Obviously, the frequency numbers mean nothing to me, but the musical notes do. So that's, you know, that's useful. Um, the current frequency is zero. The frequency that we find when we look a frequency in the array and the beat length is 150. The length of one beat. That makes sense. So yeah, if we, if we change that, we can make it faster or slower. So yeah, why not? Let's make it really fast just for the hell of it, because why not? Let's see if it works. Success! Super fast. That's awesome. I, I love that kind of that kind of instant result of electronics when they work is awesome. So I love that. Um, 
we have what else we have here look at the frequency that corresponds to the note so yeah so obviously here is where i did see this mentioned somewhere i think i'm skipping ahead a little bit um yeah so it ends basically after the notes are done is how i understand that um yes set the current frequency to match the note i love this very enthusiastic this programming is and i love that um declaring the array is i guess somewhere yeah it's in here somewhere but yeah so this is pretty cool i could also make it slow what if it was 250 then it would be super slow Oh, wow. This is... Oh, I love how slow this is. This is so stupid. <laughs> Fantastic. This is a result, if I ever, if I ever saw it. Um, oh, Rob, thank you for sharing that. So... Oh, because, yeah, being able to make my own songs, I'm going to be all over that. But also, I, I've, I've, missed, I've missed, missed much chat whilst uh, while I was noodling away in the... Um, go away. What's going on? While I was noodling away in Arduino IDE. Um, so, yeah. Oh, no. If I get a copyright strike for happy birthday, I am going to be very sad. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, oh, it looks like all the birthday. Yes, all the birthday babies are in July. July is a very popular month. Also, hello, Amy the cat. And uh, and and like. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting, God, yeah, that was a birthday funeral mar march entirely. Um, oh gosh, pull the E's down a half step and make it a slow minor key. I don't even know how to do that. I'm guessing I would change the frequency, but I don't know what I would change the frequency to, but gosh, that would be terrible. Um, I don't know if I can handle that. If I can <laughs> handle having a super, a super sad happy birthday. So, okay. This, this is again, this is a result, this is a win. Um, yeah, try, try changing the notes to make a different song is the other, is the other challenge in here. And I'm just, I am just wondering, um, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> uh, I, 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 th I, th I thought, I thought happy birthday was public domain, but I mean, I, I just, this is not my area of expertise. Uh, so, according to this, well, I can get out of the boop. According to this, this says I've completed circuit two A. That's that's a great start. We are like literally only thirty minutes in, and I'm already done with the first one. So we're zooming straight ahead because we're getting to basically. My, my next adventure in, in life and in making and in my super secret awesome project that I'm working on, and that is buttons. And I mean, who doesn't love buttons? They look cool, they are tactilely pleasing, and they are super clicky and awesome. So, yeah, like, I am... Uh, I, I'm, I'm into the fact that we're getting to the button bit. I am excited for buttons. So I'm gonna disconnect because uh, my, first, my first experience with uh, letting out the magic smoke was 100% plugging something into my CR10S Pro V2 without unplugging it. And that was fun. I mean, to be fair, I would have let out the magic smoke anyway the second I plugged it back in with it plugged into the wrong place, with the, the cable plugged in the wrong place on the breakout board, but yeah, yes, please.
please, please don't, please don't tell Naomi that I, I, I broke her beautiful printer. I didn't actually. I totally fixed it immediately. And I learned a lot in the process, but it still scared me. And I did a scream because I love my printers and I don't want to break them. So, boop, 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 boop. so yes. Next, 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 we have the digital trumpet, which sounds a little weird, um, but we're not going to go there because this is family friendly. Um, <laughs> and this is going to be about basically learning about digital inputs, learning about buttons and controlling things with buttons. Cause I don't think there was any buttons involved in the first project. Um, and so this is, this is, yeah, my first experience with, button, with buttons officially. Yeah. Cause I haven't done the buttons with the other stuff yet. So this is good. This is very good. We are leaving the buzzer and the potentiometer. We're leaving all that alone because we need that. So that's fine. But uh, we are going to be adding buttons. And so again, for, for those of you at home who like me don't necessarily know much about this stuff, buttons are also known as momentary switches because they're basically technically only on when they're pressed because they, I mean, we obviously, we can't see it in here. And I mean, you can't even like, it's not, this isn't an issue of the camera not being close enough. It's internal, it's inside. So like, you can't see it because it's, it's literally inside the button, but pressing the button connects. So the connection only happens when the button's pressed, which is great for just triggering stuff. I mean, we all press buttons every day. Literally all of us, I don't think any of us gets through the day without pressing some sort of button, even if it's just on our phone, buttons are everywhere, which is great because I like buttons. Um, and buttons obviously work on the binary number system, which a lot of this stuff works on. That is, that is basically the, the computer language that certainly is, is the one that is most commonly used. And so, yeah, it's a pretty simple thing on off, true, false, high, low. And so the button does that perfectly. Uh, now, this is an interesting thing that I noted reading this earlier is that the, apparently the red board has built in pull up resistors. So I, if I understand this correctly, it means that you don't need to use these bad boys when hooking up buttons because there's effectively resistors built into this. I might be misunderstanding this. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and so the, like, according to the booklet anyway, you know, it says a pull-up resistor is a small circuit that holds the voltage high on a pin until a button is pressed, pulling the voltage low. The most common place you will see a pull-up resistor is when working with buttons. A pull-up resistor keeps the button in one state until it's pressed. The redboard has built-in pull-up resistors, but they can also be added to a circuit externally. I'm not entirely certain if this is the same thing as these kinds of resistors. Again, I, 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 the, nice, the nice thing about my lovely audience is that there's probably more people watching who know electronics than not. So I know that one of y'all will absolutely chime in at some point to tell me either what I did wrong or what I, what I misunderstood uh, or just what, if, if I got it right or yeah, y'all are, y'all are my, my helpers, my precious helpers. So thank you. Um, right. So yeah. I was wondering about that because when I was looking up buttons, how to do, how to hook up buttons for the Raspberry Pi, I was seeing a range of things, including some setups with resistors, again, like these, and some without. And I wasn't quite sure if there was a reason for that, if there was a reason why sometimes they were, they were getting uh, used for a particular reason and other times they were not being used for a particular reason 
or if this was one of those instances where there is more than one way to skin a cat. I hate that saying, but I can't think of a better one. Um, and it works both ways, and there's different reasonings for both. But in this case, I am following the instructions because I'm very good. <laughs> I follow instructions, but I don't necessarily know what I'm doing. Later, when I know what I'm doing, that's when I stop following instructions and do whatever the hell I want. So, right, without further ado, I am going to start popping these in. Now, I always find that, and I say always, like I've done this many times before, I've literally attempted breadboard buttoning all of once, and that was yesterday. So, I am always a little nervous. I said it again. I did it again. What am I doing? Getting the buttons in because they just, oh, there we go. That's how you fit. That's how it sounds good. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. Mm -hmm. Already got my lovely red jumper cable all ready for me. So I'm going to oh, pop that there. And I'm going to plug that into... Um, I'm going to plug that into, what is that? I can't see, it's covered up. Um, jumper wires. Two. There we go, yep. Two. There we go. There we go. We got there in the end. It has a nice clicky sound, isn't it? A good cookie sound. All right, I'm pulling out all the jumper cables. Jumper cables galore. Jumper cables for everyone. I don't have enough blacks though, it looks like, which is a shame because I just want everything to be perfectly color coded. That's all I want in life. Perfect color coding. For those of you who are new to this channel, I am a huge color nerd. And uh, yeah, I color coordinate friggin' everything. You can't see it. I can't really show you without screwing up this whole setup, but my, my Copic markers are all color coordinated and my paints are color coordinated. Like my filament is now color coordinated. I am a color coordinating machine. So yeah. All right. <laughs> I am going to put in the next buttons is on 25. Yeah, see? They don't really want to go in very well. You can do it. I believe in you. I believe in you. You can do it. Get in. Get in. Get up. Come on. For crying out loud. I swear. Everyone is potentially more graceful at this than I am, but uh, it seems to be it. So you know, what I'm gonna put in. I'm gonna put in this this one before I connect it. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. So then this one's on. Oh, I did. I did put it a, a bit too close, but I don't know that it matters terribly. I don't think it, it matters terribly at all. And I didn't put it on exactly the right spot in the breadboard according to this, because it's just... See, my confidence has already grown. I'm not putting it in the exact correct spot on the breadboard according to the instructions. I'm a hooligan. Out of control! All right. <laughs> All right, those are never coming out again. So if I have to put something else in this breadboard in future projects, then I don't know, pliers, right? <laughs> All right, green, yellow, and we're gonna put that in there, and we're gonna put that in there, and 
Uh, yeah, I'm out of black, so it's going to have to be white for the, uh, oh, no, hold on. Yeah, no, I did do that right. So, choop, choop. These are so long. I want them to be, I want there to be short ones. I think I understand now why people often breadboard just with wires because you can do the really short connections and, and it looks so much cleaner. And again, I am all about them aesthetics. The big, yes, that is my arm. I am so sorry. Oh, that aesthetic life, a good aesthetic life. All right. All right, this looks correct. It is like a traffic light. I like that. Um, all right. <laughs> this looks, this, this looks correct. Again, I didn't, didn't touch any of this business and we got nice, nice clicky buttons with, uh, so much cabling in the way, but uh, I guess this is this is the joy of manual focus on a camera lens, is that uh, the wires are just kind of out of focus and the buttons are nice and crispy in focus. So uh, everyone wins. Yeah. <laughs> so mm, this is successful. This is looking like success. So we're gonna. We're going to open up the next bit of thingy. And by thingy, I mean code. Voila. We have the code. We have the digital trumpet, which is what this is. And uh, obviously we have our, our, our pins identified here. And uh, yeah, so this one, this again, let's plug it in. Oh, <laughs> so it was still remembering. I'm pretty certain that it's supposed to stop playing now. Uh, guys, my Arduino is haunted. Let's upload the digital trumpet real quick before it eats me. <laughs> that was weird. That was super weird. I feel like... I feel like it was... Not supposed to keep doing that after hitting the reset button. Is my, is my red board haunted? Is it possessed? I'm a little scared. I am, uh, 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 yeah, that's, um, all right. That's, that's just maybe pretend that didn't happen. Cause that was weird and I didn't like it. <laughs> right. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. That seems pretty good. Now I can tell I'm like, I'm already trying to do something that it's not actually set up to do. One of my one of my button wires is in a de default reset pin. Oh. Oh. I have no idea how to how, how to check that. Oh. Oh. Weird. And yes, no. Robot uh, robot uprising is next. Um, for sure, for sure. But uh, <laughs> either way, it's fine now, I guess. Yeah, that seems okay. Um, <laughs> my God. So yeah. All right. Cool. Let's let's have let's have another look at the code here because again, code is important. We obviously we have our pin modes set. There's input pull up. Yes, yes. Good, good. 
Um, the buzzer pin is the output. Two, three, and four. Buzzer on 10. This is all nice. We have the, it looks like the first, first key pin, which is going to be, I believe, yeah, red, which is set to C, the C note. Um, then we have E, then we have G. That's pretty good. And then if no, if nothing is pressed, no tone. Buzzer is off. Very good. And then over here, we still have our, our little array, our set of notes and corresponding frequencies, which is cool. Um, yeah, I want to be able to play, I want to be able to play a new note when I press more than one button. Um, hmm. Basically, I can definitely add more if statements and get more notes. And so I'm kind of like, hmm. We've got C and E and G, but like, I definitely feel like you should be able to get more. And maybe, maybe, maybe this one should be D instead. Maybe we should have this one be D, which is apparently that frequency. I'm just gonna change this to D so I don't get confused. And then this one could be E, which is again 330. So start with that and just change the notes. That's all I did. I just changed the notes. They said confidently. <laughs> cool. So yeah. I mean, I could already start to make some sort of song, song here. I'm just trying to think. So if each one does that, then what should they make? What should two of them make when they go together? So, hmm, hmm. Yes, I definitely feel like. Also, I hope you all can see the this the Arduino screen enough. Problem with the piezo buzzer, buzzer is getting it to vibrate at two frequencies at once. Yeah, no, that makes sense. But obviously, there's a way to hack this or fake it, I guess. Um, in that, if I else, if digital read first key pin is equal to low and digital read let's spell that right I hope I'm doing this right. We're going to find out. Second key pin equals low, then uh, I am totally not writing this in here correctly because it's not just going over to the next line all nice. Oh, there we go. Now it's all nicey nice tone, but oops, not buzzer, buzzer, pin, mm, 349, which, uh, yeah, I think that looks correct. So that should now play an F in theory. We're gonna find out. Oh, did it wrong. Something's wrong. Unexpected identifier. Oh, found it. Boop. There we go. Oh no, that is supposed to be there, I think. That's there. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, because I put a space. See, that's what happens when you type stuff yourself. Let's try it now. Nope, still not good. Uh, hmm. I did something wrong. What did I do wrong? Hmm. It's going to be something with the, the and. Maybe the and is supposed to be inside like that. I guess that's it. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's see. Okay. Cool. Hmm. Hmm. I feel like that's not quite right. Hmm. Is the text too small? I feel like it might possibly be too small. I could potentially make it a little bigger. like so, and again, we're getting, getting live, uh, live stream fixing. Yep. Is that better? Can you all see the, the text a little bit better now? Cause it's still way too small. This is the, uh, Actually, I wonder if I can make the text bigger here. Is that a thing you can do? Can I uh, make the font bigger? Ah, I can. That should be better. I mean, it's huge now. It's huge for me, but uh, it should be way easier. Way easier for y'all. Also, thanks, Terry. I'm glad you like my hair. I like my hair too. But yeah, that should be easier to read now. Um, oh, I see. Ah, uh, yes, the order. Yes, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. So, we want this to be first, I guess. Um, so... Just trying to think of the easiest way to do this. So, yeah, da, 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 da. yeah, da, 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 da. that looks about right, I think. Pretty sure. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. I'm sorry that the text was hard to read. I was not sure how to make it bigger, but now I know. And uh, and it's going to be it will be better for future streams. Promise. I can even make it I can make it maybe even a squidge bigger, but. There we go. That's that's nice and nice and juicy big now. Nice and thick. Very thick. Okay, so it should be re-uploaded now. So again, correct? Hey! <laughs> yes, success! Very pleased. Okay, okay. I uh, I just realized y'all couldn't see me celebrate. <laughs> 
waiting because I was on the wrong stream. Yes, success. Very good success with that. It works. Um, so yeah, obviously I could, I could go from here and I could set up another note for these, for basically for, for the back two, for, for green and yellow, um, in the same fashion. And I feel like in theory, I could do one for all three, but it's hard to press all three buttons at the same time. Partially because I, uh, I mean... It's possible. It's just a bit of a fact. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. I could do that. Should I do that? Should I get it? Should I make it do that? Should I do a whole one whole code? I think I can. I think I can definitely do that. Watch me go. Watch me go. So let's make it so it's the second and third. And we'll make it, so that was F, we'll make it G. 392, what was it? Yeah. 392, that's here. 392. 392. And I'm actually guessing that the one with all three is going to need to be the first one. So let's add an else there. Get up here. Get that up there. And yeah, I'll copy that bad boy. Add two more ands. Third, and we'll make that A, 440. Like so. Oh, too many, too many ands. Too many ands. Caught that. Okay. That looks, that looks right, I think. Yeah, so. Do the uploady. Nothing broke, nothing died. Very good, good start. So, not Janet. Um, I'm assuming there is potentially a way to combine, like, like there might be a way to do this more elegantly in code, but for this sake, I am, I am simply assigning a new value, um, a new frequency. Um, ooh, you might be right about the, uh, the chat box. Let's, um, let's see if I can't refresh it or something. There we go. Oh, that was weird. Sorry about that. Yeah, I think, yeah, it was definitely, I think, stuck. I don't know why it was stuck, but it, it definitely seemed to be stuck. Oh, well, um, it's fixed now. But yeah, so I'm not so much combining the frequencies as just assigning a whole new one um, because I have this lovely list of frequencies. So I am able to just say, oh, well, I want it to be, you know, an A. So I will put in that note. That being said, we got to try it. Okay. Good. Hmm. Feel like I got them. This is signed. <laughs> hey, Brian. It's your birthday too, wasn't it? Like it's definitely birthday time. It's very good. Um, this is interesting because I thought so. Hmm. So I definitely have interesting. Oh, I do have the first and second set to hire. 
That's my bad. I just wrote them in the wrong order. Haha. That's okay. Yeah. I have a. Uh, I wanted them the other way. 92. 49. Let's fix it. Because I'm, I'm fussy that way. Okay, okay. I mean, it's not exactly elegant, and the notes are a little wobbly, but if... Please tell me that y'all can hear that, because if you can't hear the buzzer, then... then I, like, I'm gonna be very sad because I've done... I've done a whole lot of sound things, and I feel... Good about that. <laughs> but also, 50s are excellent, and I reckon that I, I agree. I agree with Andy that uh, the 50s are the new 30s. So I don't see I don't see a problem at all with that. <laughs> but yeah, please tell me y'all can hear the sound, because I will be sad. Oh, of course I could assign another note to the first and third. I haven't done that. I just kind of forgot that one, but I still feel pretty good about that. So, oh, thank God. <laughs> I was going to be really sad if y'all couldn't hear it. So, yeah, I have, I have, I've tackled, I've tackled some of the coding challenge. Admittedly, I, uh, I'm very intrigued by the part of the, the coding challenge that talks about playing more than three notes with binary math. You can use a clever math equation to play more than three notes with your three keys. By multiplying each key by a different number, then adding up all these numbers, you can make a math equation that produces a different number for each combination of keys. This is, I guess, potentially the thing that was being discussed earlier. That, yeah, that's going to be the, the cool way to do it, and I, I'm not entirely certain how to do that. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, not not entirely sure how to do the with the with with a math equation, but I think it's cool. There are no cats in here, sadly. <laughs> they they were not I guess they were not feeling electronics tonight, so they're off being cats elsewhere. Though to be fair, they probably wouldn't like it. They don't like sounds like this. <laughs> but yeah, I I at least got three, four, five, six. I could definitely have more probably. I could definitely have a seventh easily, but uh, I haven't set it up that way. Three buttons, eight possibilities. Ooh, eight possibilities. Hmm. Kitties are somewhere else. I don't actually know where they are. That's the nice thing about cats is that you don't have to actually babysit them. You can just let them live their life. That said, they, they are usually in my business. So, uh, yeah, they must just be snoozing. They must be being cats. And by cats, I mean asleep somewhere but yeah i uh oh ah rob has provided an excellent explanation as to why the notes are wobbly that's fantastic See, this is why we, we have an expert on board because i could not have explained this at all um oh, oh i see that makes perfect sense that is perfect i love it i love it thank you rob but uh yeah that is that's it. That's that's this bit. So we're on to we're on to Simon Says, which is going to be interesting, very interesting. So uh, I'm jealous of your kitty. My laps are my, my laps. My cats are not lap cats, so I never have a cat in my lap. Um, ah, including the combination when none pressed. That's the eighth. There we go. We figured that one out. So, let's, uh, hi. <laughs> so, for Simon Says, apparently we are introducing loops, or for loops, rather. I should be specific. Specificity matters. Um, and so, I guess with the for loops, that is, sets to repeat a section of code a limited number of times, and it sets. The, the limit it sets the limit in it um to say you know how often you want it to go and 
how often you want it to increase, like how, by how, how much it increases each time. So that seems good. That makes sense. I'm, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm following, I'm following this. Um, and so then also this, this introduces time actually, which is interesting because apparently the red board can keep time. Like, I'm sure this doesn't surprise all of you, but I'm kind of a little amazed that it can do that. Obviously, it's got to it's going to have something on here that is telling time, keeping time. But that's freaking cool. I'm into that. Um So yeah, so it can tell how much time has passed in milliseconds. So for the Simon says, it's going to be able to tell how much time has passed so that it can, you know, get mad at me if I haven't put in the answer fast enough. And that's, that's pretty cool. Um, this is also going to be using custom functions, which again, makes, makes sense that you'd need some user defined functions here, which we will see shortly. But, uh, for, for now, we're going to pop in a few more buttons. And uh, I'll swap this over because we need our blue button now. But also we are going to be putting in, uh, see, this is where, uh, this is why there needed to be space in between. Mm, actually, there is enough space in between. There is, I mean, it's going to be crowded as heck because it's time for LEDs. It is time. LEDs. Yeah, apparently the red board does, at least this one, this particular red board has a, oh no, LEDs everywhere, um, has a clock. And that's pretty wild. I kind of love it. All right. I, I may have spilled LEDs everywhere. My bad. Uh. <laughs> is that what is required for a TARDIS, a blue board? All right. Get in there. Boop. Oh, no. I don't need all those LEDs. So this is potentially going to be too tight of a fit. So we are going to give it a go because there is technically enough space to make this happen. It's just going to be a little, uh, a little tight, a little, a little tight. So we do need resistors now. And this one does require resistors and I saved my resistors from, from last time. So I've got some, some pre-bent ones. Come on, come in. We got, we got our, we got our resistors here. We've got our LEDs here. We can, we can see stuff. Okay. Now one of these resistors is a different type of resistor. I don't think it would hurt it, but to be on the safe side, I'm going to use the ones it says to use, which means I need one more of these. Come here. All right. So we have LED. So this is where it gets a little, definitely a little bit frankly, because I got to be able to, oh my God. This is, <sighs> okay. Okay. We have resistor one success. Then we need to connect it. Oh God, I got tiny hands too. Like this is the thing. I am not a person with big hands. I am a person with surprisingly tiny hands actually. Whoa, wow, that goes really far in. That seems a little odd. Let's hope that's not a, not a problem. Oh God, okay. This is, this is where things get shifted. <laughs> Shift it around a bit. I gotta, I gotta 
put, okay. This is in two. We gotta move these. These are gonna come out for now. So then this will go in three. Oh God. Oh, we're still plugged in. Hey, hey, hey. Turn off. All right. It's all, it's all fine. It's all fine. Cool. All right. Nothing, nothing broken. Nothing broken. All right. Now for yellow. Get that one in there. And then somehow get my fiddly hands in there and then yeah oh god oh god it's so fiddly there we go and then okay so then we've got yellow button Move this over a little bit. Yellow button and yellow LED. Okay. So far so good. Okay. Very good. All right. So far so good. Then the green button goes into the next slot into six. We've got the green LED. Yes, I am just absolutely dictating everything because I can. Okay, and I'm realizing I should get that button in, that blue button, before I get too far. Because the button is hard to get in. Oh my god. Time for me to make. See, hmm. This might be a bad idea, but I'm gonna. Sorry, my hand is somewhat in the way. All right, so yeah, in case anyone's curious, I am using a jewelry file to press down. Because it's a small, solid surface. Voila. Okay. We got that. That's good. That's good. Oh, God. You guys can't see Jack Diddley with uh, all these wires in the way. Gorsh. Gorsh. Okay. That's a little bit better. You can, you can kind of, kind of see past the sea of wires. And, uh, yeah, yeah, we were talking, we were definitely, uh, talking about that earlier, Brian, how the, how the, the switches do not seem to want to go into the redwards very well. So, nope, nope, let's turn that around for our last LED. All right. I feel like green is not in there super, super duper well, but I, I think. It's in there as well as it's going to be. Uh, boop. Boop. All right. Now I need to connect like 20 more jumpers. Um, cross lock tweezers. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, pliers, fine pliers I can do. I've got jewelry pliers, um, which is also apparently how I take the uh, SD card out of my Raspberry Pi when I can't reach it with my fingers. So, uh, mm, yes, maybe not the best. All right. So we need, so I'm actually going to yeah, turn around this way. That's a bit better. Yeah. Oh God. So this one. There we go. We got resistor and then we have 
jumper and a jumper and uh, yeah we are down to the last two all right so bend our resistor wires like so yeah see it's not just me okay Get it. Is that in? This is the thing. I'm always like, is it in? Is it in? Do I need to keep pushing? Am I pushing too hard? Admittedly, admittedly, one of my biggest fears around electronics, around doing electronics, is the fact that these things are so tiny and they seem so delicate. So I'm always very much like, oh God, oh God. I'm gonna break it. And uh, and I don't wanna break anything. Like, really and truly, don't wanna break anything. So, I am always a little bit nervous with this stuff for that exact reason. I have no idea how hard you can push on stuff. Fortunately, so far, it seems as though with the pie, I can push pretty hard and nothing bad happens. So that's a relief. All right. Oh God, I can't see what I'm doing. Okay. And then, oh God, it's a tight fit. It's a tight fit. <laughs> all of these, in fact, I don't know that you can see like, these are all, they're not sitting super happy. They're all a little hanky. A little hanky. Um, oh. Yeah, this is a, this is a lot. But yeah, what you guys are talking about sounds, yeah, I would have absolutely been put off by dodgy push buttons, for sure. Like, me and, and my, my big old fear face. Would have definitely been put off. So let's see if I can't. Because this is going to be the thing to see. Stay. Perfect. Kind of perfect. Let's uh, actually. Oh. There we go. That's, that's lit. Sort of. Mostly. Right. Okay, so I think we've got everything cor connected correctly. I'm like reasonably certain I have all the LEDs in correctly. They're not 100% certain because I never am 100% certain ever. But yeah, so I'm gonna get the boop, 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 boop open up the Simon Says. And, uh, Perfect, it's nice and big. So, yay, much bigger. I mean, give me time. I mean, I, I, you never know. It turns out actually I really like soldering. So a soldering challenge wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. All right, now I feel like the text is maybe too big, but okay. So we got, we got some Simon Says. And we are, we are getting ready to set up this, the, the, the Arduino Simon Says that I have apparently just built which still blows my mind a little bit. Yeah. Um, right. So, okay. Like just having a quick look at it and we've got our buttons on two, four, six, and eight. God, I hope so. Two, four, six, and eight. That seems good. LEDs on three, five, seven, nine. We've got some tones. Um, you gotta, you gotta get 10, 10 rounds to win. The buzzer is on 10. Okay, 
That's the variable if the button, button's pressed. Keeps track of the round. That's the time limit. All right. Oh, that's gonna be interesting. Okay. <laughs> Let's get in. Oh, wrong one. This one. Something's gonna go inky. I just know it. You know, including. Okay. It's. Hmm. Don't do that. There we go. <laughs> Since apparently my reset. Oh, I have So that's basically what it looks like to lose very quickly. Um, <laughs> oh, hello. All right, a soft and fuzzy creature has appeared, but she is probably going to be shy and not want to be seen. So I'm going to I'm going to let her investigate and and do what she does. Hi. Hello. Would you like to say hi? She says, nah, she wants to sniff things. Sniffing things is more fun. Thanks. That's basically what she says. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Lights are on. My, my green is a little, a little low, but that might just be normal. It doesn't look low for you guys. You guys look great. So, um, all right. So if I press a button, it should start. There we go. Oh. Oh my god. Oh my god. I think I won! That sounded like a win. <laughs> yes! I mean, not because I won Simon Says, so that's cool, but like more cool is the fact that it's a friggin' working Simon Says on a breadboard connected to a tiny little piece of circuitry. This is cool, guys. You guys, you guys, this is awesome. I love how I haven't touched the volume knob once because it's quite quiet. Um, this is super freaking awesome. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm sitting here, I'm like, oh, I should probably like look at the code and learn about this, but I'm just so excited that it's a freaking functional Simon Says, Simon Says game that I put together with some of the silliest little bits of stuff I've ever seen. I am just absolutely gobsmacked. This is amazing. So, <laughs> yes. I, I hope if any of you are following along with your own kits at home that you have also had this success because it is really, really exciting and really fun. And if it's not too late to join in because there's going to be, there's still three more projects to go. And if you are enjoying this and you want to follow along, I definitely recommend picking up a kit. Um, there will be a link. There's a link in the description and there will be a link in the chat. And you can go do projects one and two and then wait on project three so you can do it with me soon in a few weeks or so. But uh, cause this is, this is so satisfying. This is so, so incredibly fantastic. Also, whilst I'm being proper and actually thinking of things for those of you who weren't here at the beginning of the stream, there is no super chat, but there is the coffee donation chat bubble thing so that when you donate it, pops up and there's a notification and I can give you love and say thank you and answer any questions you have 
because that's how the super chat works, but I don't have it. So that's how that works. If you want to, if you want to toss a coin to your maker and, uh, and help me, help me fund awesome projects and stuff like that. But yeah, this is freaking amazing. I, I love this. I can't believe that this is up. Oh, I started it again and I got to play. Hey, it's different. Love it. Now I can never write this code. Up, oh, that's the, that's the lose noise. There we go. I love it. I love it. That's fantastic. Um, <laughs> yes, this is great. This is fantastic. So, I, 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 we should look at the code. We should look at the code. The code is important. Um, yes, that wasn't a very subtle Witcher reference. It was a very unsubtle Witcher reference, especially since I almost said Witcher. Um, but I do not slay monsters yet give it time. I haven't yet built, started building my own swords. So, you know, give it time. But yeah, it is, it is, let's, let's see, let's, let's have a look here at, at the code because understanding how the code works is obviously an important part to this. So again, I have, you know, where's the, the millis, where's the millis? Give me the millis. Okay. So yeah, we've got a, Whole, a whole lot going on here. Oh. I, I am looking. There it is. Okay. So this is, yeah, the start time. The start time equals equals the time thing. So start time is going to be in here somewhere, probably. Yeah, here we go. Start time equals zero. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And then we've got, we've got Boolean. Boolean variables somewhere, maybe, possibly. This is a lot longer. This, this code is a lot, lot longer. Now, wow, I definitely feel like I understand the gist of it for sure, which is great. Um, but I also feel like it would take me a little while to go through this thing in detail. So I may not do that. But there's definitely some other functions to note. Flash LED. Um, yeah, we got the flash LED, which uh, tells it digital write LED number to high. And um, tone, tone the pin. I am, um, yeah, it definitely can. I also feel like my brain is starting to enter into that like slightly late melty zone, which is always the downside of doing a, a, a live stream at night that requires brain power if I start to lose brain power. But this is, this is really, really cool. And I, I can definitely see where this kind of makes sense. I can also feel, I can also see where I would not probably, oh, there's the Boolean. I found the Boolean. There you are. Variable to tell the game whether or not to play the start sequence. That makes sense. Um, if the game started is false, then it can potentially start again. That makes sense. But yeah, my understanding with a lot of these things is that <laughs> very rarely, um, very rarely when you are kind of building an electronics project are you writing code entirely from scratch. Um, I feel like um, when you are building something that it makes sense to look to see if somebody's done it before you because it seems as though there's vast repositories of code already out there. 
and that's amazing. And honestly, I, I feel like that is so helpful because it's much easier to learn and understand code with code. Having to create this from scratch would have been painful and frustrating and taken me a very long time. And I feel as though there's a, a, a lot, a lot more likely that I would have ended out kind of getting frustrated and stopping. And so with kind of pre-written code, I imagine that some people could say that's cheating and I feel like I, I, someone's always out there saying that blah thing is cheating and I've heard it a million times over my life. Um, oh, have I, do I have, I might, you're right. I have, do I have the wrong chat on? Oh no, I don't know how to switch it. <laughs> I have live chat. Oh, oh, hello. <laughs> we Hi. <laughs> so we, uh, we have a visitor, it seems unexpectedly. I, uh, this is Mabel and it seems that she's interested in electronics. Hi. Okay. Not anymore. Bye-bye. <laughs> You're very silly. Thank you for the visit. So yeah, that, that's my cat. Um, <laughs> but yeah, sorry about that. I, I do think that, uh, I did not have the, the full chat in the, in the chat thing. Clearly I'm still learning about streaming. So, uh, yeah, but yes, code, code. Um, I definitely, I very much agree that learning from existing code is way, way better. And I know for me, for someone like me who doesn't have a programming background and is learning everything for the first time that having something that's functional to start from, you are such a brat. <laughs> You actually probably can't see her because I think she just blends in, but she has literally found found the one thing to bat around. Really? Is this how it's going to be? Are you a drama queen? Would you like to come back and be in the light so people can see your pretty face? No, apparently not. She's going to sit in the dark. Come here. Come here, you. Yeah. Yep. This is my life. My life is cat. Cat <laughs> climbing on what I'm doing. Cat putting butt in my face. Like. Hi. Have have you given everything a sufficient sufficient uh inspection? Is it good? Does it pass? Does it pass muster? Okay, and we're done. Clearly, nothing is interesting enough here <laughs> to stay. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, code. Obviously, we've got some skilled people in our audience who write their own code, and that's awesome. And frankly, we need people who write their own code because somebody's got to write the code. But uh, I don't feel particularly bad or guilty or weird about not necessarily writing my own code, at least to start. Like, I very much hope that one day I will be writing my own code. But I like the, the sense of sharing and the, the learning from pre-existing code that exists with this sort of thing. Obviously, one of the things that has made the Sparkfun Inventors Kit so much easier to use Yes, she is a brat. She is absolutely making noise. Um, is the fact that the code is included. I don't have to write code from scratch. And it has made everything so much easier. I mean, again, it, it works. If I press the button, it's gonna start again and that's gonna make me have to play it. And yeah, I can't, I can't help myself if it starts. 
so I'm not going to push it. But this is, this is spectacular. I have very much kind of jumped further ahead in this, and that feels amazing. So I, I love it. I'm honestly, I'm super excited because next project, as you can kind of see here, is involving friggin' ultrasonic sensors and servo motors. So, uh, yeah, this is, next, next project is definitely going to be really cool too. And again, I'm kind of like already like, wow, okay, I'm already getting to servo motors and distance sensors. Like, holy crap. Yeah, this, this really takes you, it takes you far. This doesn't feel like beginner stuff anymore. Like blinking an LED, that feels like a beginner thing. Freaking servos and stuff is like, okay, yeah, no, we're out of the kiddie pool already. But that's cool. That's fantastic. Again, under normal circumstances, you could do this whole thing in a day um, or a weekend, depending on how dedicated you are. But I'm spreading it out so that I can do it with you guys. And you guys can can experience it with me and watch a silly artist learn electronics for the first time because that's exactly what I am. So I am uh, I am I am very hopeful that this has been at the very least very entertaining, if not educational as well. I again I do hope that some of you out there are kind of new to this stuff too and it's not just me but uh yay i'm thank you thank you for coming by brian i do appreciate it and admittedly i do think that we are going to be wrapping up a little early this time because i did the project it's done it's all done um admittedly if there are questions now is a good time for questions uh but I do think that this is going to be a, a slightly shorter stream. And the next one, again, is going to be... Oh, the next one is going to be interesting for sure. This is going to be new stuff for me for sure. So I think the next one's going to probably take a little bit longer. But back to kind of usual time. But yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Thank you, all you lovely folks. Thank you for you Americans that have have taken taken some time out from your holiday weekend to hang out with me. And, and for the rest of us not in the U.S., thank you for spending the weekend with me anyway. And your evening, too, because obviously uh, those of us over on the east side of the Atlantic, it is late. So... It is, uh, it is so, so lovely to have y'all join me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, uh, please subscribe because when I am not live streaming, I am making cool videos with a huge range of topics, including cosplay and 3D printing and art and weirdness and apparently personal revelations. So, you know, that's a thing now. Absolutely. Please stick around because I love having y'all around for this adventure and to have fun with me because, yeah, it's not as much fun to do alone. This is way more fun. Also, I get to be a huge goofball and y'all get to watch me be a huge goofball. It's a win-win, I think. Pretty sure. Right, though. What do you think? One more game? One more game of Simon Says? Yeah. Go on then. Hey.
Perfect. <laughs> I love it. Why is that so much fun? It's so stupid. It's so enjoyable. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you again, everyone who took some time out of the day to come and join me. I so, so appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who donated. Thank you especially to all my patrons. You guys are the best and you know it, which is why I give you the good stuff. Best stuff for patrons. And in fact, actually, I am but one patron away from 50 and at 50 triggers the next basically big rewardy thing. And I'm going to be a, uh, actually, I'm going to be having a tour through my entire cosplay closet at 50 patrons. So if that sounds interesting and you're not yet a patron, then you know what to do because you will trigger it and make it happen. So that is, uh, that's very much on you, but Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Mwah! I will 100% see you soon for project three. You better be there. You got to stick with me to the end. We got more to do. We have a tiny robot to make, or so I'm told. But in the meantime, everyone have a wonderful evening. And I will see you again real soon. Bye.